Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Vifa Rikivik um, speakers. I have two of them as you can not see at all. Um, these are small, well, smallish, they're about the size of a fist. Um, Bluetooth speakers, they use Bluetooth 5.0 and to my knowledge, they're, Af they're AAC and Aftex um, supported. And that's it. Um, so just regular, regular standards, um, no Aftex HD, um, nothing fancy. Um, their frequency response is down to 62 hertz and up to 20, 21 hertz. Personally, I love this design, um, although, if, I do it, if it will focus, you'll notice it's a bit, Yeah, there's a bit of stuff in the grill, and yeah, you can see like, there's little splotches. Those aren't paint issues. Those are um, those are from rubbing up against things because these are actually very sharp. Like, yeah, these are not polished. It's more akin to like a um. A cheese grater. And it does hurt. I rub my knuckles up against it once. I knocked my knuckles up against it once. And it hurt. Like a lot. Um, because it, it generally does like scrape. Um, it's like a mild zester. I don't know. It's a weird comparison. <laughs> I, I bought two of these. One's in the background. This one in the background will be sound testing because it's on a freaking table. Um, and it's a good enough distance away from the camera. Um, so, Vifa is a small Danish company that um, makes, well, has been making drivers forever. Um, and these recently got into making movies speakers a couple years ago. I was looking for a replacement for my JBL Charge 3, yeah, because I gave it to a friend, and I was, like, looking for a new speaker, so I was like, hey, everyone recommends Vifa, so I was like, hey, let's look at Vifa. I've never heard of them before, so I checked them out. In the center is a 60, no, a 70 millimeter, my bad, um, woofer, which we'll get to later, because I have some issues with it. It sounds good, but we'll get to that during the sound test. And then on the sides, there are two um, tweeters. Um, both, um, all three of them are, all three drivers are Vifa. So they're very high quality. Vifa makes very nice drivers. These retail, I think I paid 200 ish. No. These retail for about 190. I had them for 160 on sale. Um, so before we get into the sound test and things I like, and what I don't like, um, we'll get into um, audio latency. So I have a video pulled up on my iPad. These are both using Bluetooth 5.0. on a MacBook Pro over Wi-Fi uh, in a hotel room. And normally that would be impossible on a MacBook like this, so I am, of course, streaming it via GeForce Now. This has been around for a few years now, but they are starting to roll out one of the biggest... ...and... ...left off. 
You also don't have to buy games through GFN, and there's also a selection of free games to play, with a lot of the usual... ...why series currently only available. So as you can see, the, no, the uh, words, um, so as you can see, even though it is Bluetooth um, 5.0, um, there's still about um, a few more seconds of delay between hitting quantities and each vote. And it's like that on all devices, but once it gets going, it's, it's honestly fine. Um, aside from that, there's um, there's not much issue. Oh, hit the tripod, and I tried the illusion. I did tripod into here because it's cold um anyways what i like a lot about these so we're, we're we're gonna move on from video because it's pointless um let's be real no one's really using these to watch videos um and get into why in a second so vifa made this speaker like, ridiculously over-engineered. And I love that. Um, I wish she did a better job of finishing it. Because it kind of is painful if you scratch any of it against it. Although it feels incredibly durable, there's zero flex. The body has zero flex, um, but I have an issue. Build quality-wise, well not really build quality-wise, um, I've only owned these a few weeks and these are already gross, but it's soft plastic, so I can just kind of like rub it off. Um, it's IPX4, so it's like splash resistant. Um, what I really, really hate are these freaking buttons. You can see right here, there's volume up, volume down, and then the rest. And honestly, I can never, ever, ever find the buttons except for volume up. Because volume up is raised slightly. But because of the way it's designed, it's reached around and you have to show it. And these have the stupidest amount of pressure you have to put on them. And so this, uh, the power button right here, slash pairing button also has the world's most pressure you have to put, it's put an absolutely astronomical amount of pressure on it and it's mushy so you don't feel any, anything on like a JBL or something like that you would have um, a physical feedback besides that honestly it's, it's been a good experience I've had these for about a month the leather is broken in. This is visual tan leather. Very nice. Very high quality. Um, so back to sound. 70. And then there's like two... I don't know. Right? Two years on the side. I have no idea what size they are. But they're fabric domed. And then there's some nice mesh underneath. So it sounds pretty good. Um, it's got a DSP for each one of them. And it sounds pretty good. Um, my main problem with this speaker, I should hold off for that, um, things I really do like, there is a quick pair button, and that is freaking nice, like, I own two bales, very nice. Bales and speakers. Um, these are the well, this one is I own two of them. Um, and I use them and I pair them off with the Apple TV occasionally or my iPad and watch movies off them because they're great. Well, music. Um, but they um have they force you to the app to pair, and I freaking hate that because it takes forever and never works. In fact, I spent like 20 minutes today trying to pair this up with my 
I put TV. And it works eventually, but it's a pain in the butt. So thank you, Viva, for making these stereo. Um, with a button. Super nice, super easy, and reliable. Never has failed. Um, last issue I have. Occasionally, I would plug these into my MacBook to save battery on my iPhone. Um, also, iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack. It's just a fact. Honestly, I don't mind, because these are Bluetooth speakers. But we have a Bluetooth jack, um, an aux jack. But I've noticed something. It has a tendency to deactivate DSP, so it sounds flat. And by flat, I mean, like, there's no processing going on. And you need to push the MacBook pretty hard. Nothing wrong with that, but you really need to push it. Second, my last complaint, um, the USB-C port, um, is annoying as heck. And I reached out to Viva about this. I was wondering if I got, like, a bad batch or something, because they have two of them. And both of them have this issue, and they, and they said it was normal behavior. They will not charge with any, um, power source, unless it's... Qualcomm Quick Charge certified. Yes, you have to use a Qualcomm Quick Charger or a phone charger. I have tried it. Every other charger, I have 12 watt, 10 watt, 15 watt, 30 watt. None of them work. It has to be a phone charger. Samsung's don't work. It, I don't know. I've used. Uh, Nokia Brook doesn't work. I've used an Apple Brook, doesn't work. It has to be a Qualcomm one. I don't know why. That's annoying. But enough complaints. Let's get into what I really like. And then we'll discuss that driver issue. So we'll turn this one off so we don't have stereo. Then we'll turn the stereo back on so you guys can hear it. And as you can see, it turned off, felt nothing, and you heard nothing, which is annoying. So bring this one over, and you might ask, why is it on a hat? And my answer is because I don't want residents from this table, and I'm working on a table. It's about a meter away, so let's play some music. No copyright, of course, because YouTube guys. Should probably pair it up. So here's the sound test portion. Put on the official sound test beanie.
So as you guys could probably hear, it sounded great, except for one little thing. Um, the woofer in this, I feel has a tendency to have a soft cutoff or it can't, or the amps can't provide enough power to it at higher volume. So the woofer kind of overwhelms the tweeters and gets like really not muddy, but kind of muffled. Um, there's still highs, but if you play like rap music to that, um, the volume goes down considerably. And I, I've broken these in thoroughly and I've tested them. Um, classical vocals, anything, like really anything at like half volume, half to 75% volume sounds great, full, and like has a good amount of bass. Not, not overwhelming, but it, you get to 100%. You will have um, the, the shakiness, I don't, I don't know. You will have the, the definite. Uh, I don't know how to describe it exactly. Um, almost wobble of the bass. Um, it doesn't distort or anything, but it just becomes comes in and out like um, a sine wave, and it's kind of annoying. The bottom also gets kind of warm, but I guess this is because there's a big driver in there, and the battery in here is super tiny. But aside from that, the battery. The battery life, if you put it at reasonable volumes, about eight hours. At max, or like 75 to 80%, it's about four, four or five hours. Now, if you play more bass heavy, that's about two hours, because the battery in here is just like a single double sized um, lithium ion battery. Um, it's kind of annoying. If you play anything loud, but I, I don't use these just because they're really good speakers. So I use them at like 70% volume max. Um, and then that volume, they sound great. They sound great for vocals, instrumental. Um, I'd probably stay away from more bass heavy tracks. Pop sounds pretty good to these. And the stereo separation is Phenomenal, it's way better than anything that's class. And I think even above the class, like, it's solid value. Um, I probably wouldn't get this colorway because, yeah, I literally just carry these up the stairs and they're already gross. Literally just clean these. But yeah, I really like these speakers. They do a great job. I like Bluetooth 5.0. I think it needs to be on more things. The book quality is solid. The leather is very nice. It's looking good. It's very nice. You can see it's full grain, which is like a very nice, almost being almost in touch. Yeah, overall, I'm very impressed with these speakers. They sound very good. I know it sounds like I've crapped on them a lot, and I kind of have, but aside from some issues that they have, they sound pretty good. Um, would I pay full 200 bucks on them? Probably not. At that price, I'd probably get like two JBL charge. Actually, how much is a JBL charge? Six or five, whatever the way is. I'd probably get one of those over this because it's more fun. And more functional. These aren't really that waterproof, or these won't charge your phone or anything like that. Um, but they have more of a reference sound. Um, they're not exactly balanced by any sense of the imagination, but they're more balanced than JBL. They're more, they're almost clinical. But they still have a bit of low end punch and a little bit of grunt. And I like that.
It's not as aggressive as JVL, which has like endless bass, I feel. But it, it's still, it's very strained, very deep bass that can go with the big guys. And these play down to 62 hertz, so it's not too bad for the size. These also have no piece of passive radiators. Um, I wish that the DSP was a bit better on the main woofer because it kind of gets muddy at high volumes when you're playing basic tracks so that the JBL doesn't. But aside from that, pretty good. I recommend these. Maybe aren't two of them, maybe not in this colorway. Don't get aluminum, get like the fabric because the fabric would look a lot less painful. Because it is generally painful. Aside from that, highly recommend buy these. Um, these are the Reeky Geek. Yep, pretty good. Hope you guys have a nice day.